Hi, this is Margo. This is Thursday, December 7, 2017. I'm a hypnotist, holistic life coach, and empathic spiritual healer. What you have here is a picture of my website in case people are interested in my services. And here's my about page so that you can read about me. Today I'm going to talk to everyone about what I saw when I asked in meditation what the beast was. I asked this back in 1998. I was doing some exploratory meditation and just asking about what different things were. And I asked before I went into meditation, I wanted to see exactly what the beast was. And what I saw was most disturbing and I haven't shared it with a lot of people and I haven't shared it publicly but now that <clears throat> there's so much coming out about the AI God that's being created in Silicon Valley we're going to talk about that in a little bit and computers are reaching singularity very quickly and they're thinking that robots are going to take over the world and you know we are in that time now we're in a huge transition phase and in a phase where things are changing very rapidly and we our human bodies are being changed because of the things that are being put in the air and the water and um, you know the food that we're eating and we are I've seen in my work that we are actually being taken over by this mechanical process and actually being robotized from the inside out and we don't actually have to be physically chipped in order to be taken over and there's a lot of information on this on the internet so I'm not going to spend a lot of time going into that you can do your own research and see how we're being taken over from the inside out but my vision when I went into deep meditation I saw a, a someone I saw I specifically saw a woman using a, her personal computer at home and then I saw um, like a, it was a split screen and on the other side of the screen I saw um, a computer on the other end and someone a, a guy at the controls of the computer on the other end and he was actually being able to control and influence the woman who was using her computer so there was a, a direct connection and that was before we were we were skyping and uh, you know being able to visually go back and forth and communicate visually and audibly all at the same time in real time that was before all of that this was in the fall of 1998 when I saw this and I've thought about that a lot and I've done meditations and I've done sessions um, where I've asked a lot about the chip and what it was going to do and, uh, and about the mark and the mark the beast and I've been instructed not to physically put anything in my body that I'm aware of especially the mark uh, the chip because the chip is going to what I was told that the chip will actually change the DNA of the body and will make you sick it will make you vulnerable to all different kinds of diseases and uh, lower your immune system and will actually make you sick because of the electrical frequencies also that are running through your body extra that are being conducted and this is absolutely what's coming out now all of this is coming out now and this was told to me back in 1998 and 1999 when I was asking about these things and we're in the midst of a huge change 
and a lot of people are are going to um, be taken over by these things by default and it was predicted many years ago and Ray Kurz Kurzweil was one of them who predicted these things Damien Broderick who was a science fiction writer who actually who wrote a book called The Spike and I have read parts of his book um, on my YouTube channel and put it up on my YouTube channel I was going to read a lot of the book but I didn't wasn't getting very many views but this is um, here's uh, just a quote that he used from Ray Kurzweil at the beginning of chapter 2 of his book The Spike how technology is taking over our lives and Ray Kurzweil said um, he was quoted by R and D in R and D magazine in 1999. A threshold event will take place early in the 21st century: the emergence of machines more intelligent than their creators. By 2019, a $1,000 computer will match the processing power of the human brain about 20 million billion calculations per second. Organizing these resources, the software or intelligence will take us to 2029, by which time your average personal computer will be equivalent to a thousand human brains. Once a computer achieves a level of intelligence comparable to human intelligence, it will necessarily soar past it. The next 20 years will see far more change than the previous hundred. The key to an assessment of future trends is timing, determining how much progress can realistically be expected in particular time frames. So that's what he was quoted as saying in 1999. And then Damien Broderick says, Aside from the astounding biological changes considered in the previous chapter, a number of technological advances will have immense impact on our lives. In increasing order of importance, these include full-scale sensory immersion, virtual reality, molecular, molecular manufacturing, also known as nanotechnology, and genuine artificial or machine augmented eye, minds AI leading swiftly to super intelligences or SI and this is where we're at and these these things were predicted a long time ago and then it goes all into virtual reality and stuff and this is we're at the threshold of this now and I don't believe it's good I believe that this is Satan. I believe this is the dark side. This is satanic. And it has been designed to be very appealing, to make our lives easier, and um, to it's addictive. I mean, people are addicted to their phones and texting and everything else. And a lot of people have started into virtual reality. And now they've created the Sophia robot that you know she's self-learning and you know she wants to make babies and have fa have a family and stuff and it's infiltrating and taking us over and it was a little step by step little by little um, taking over here and there here and there and now very few people even have a hardwired phone most people only have cell phones and um, the cell phone is is the crux of it, and how they're going, they're hooking people in because people are not are not able to function without their cell phones. So um, the beast is the computer, and the computers are not necessarily bad. It's how they're used, and um, you know spirituality is just not kept up with technology and people have opted for 
technology rather than going within spiritually and connecting with the divine and connecting with God and Jesus and um, with you know their organic human part of themselves that's divine and pretty soon it's all going to be shut off and I'm going to share with you also today this is um, an article this is from Wired Magazine. I'm sure people have heard about this. This was from September of 2017. And this is all over the internet now. I mean, it's really hitting it big. So I thought I'd talk about it too. That God is a bot and Anthony Lewandowski is his messenger. And this is uh, straight from Silicon Valley. It says, uh, Many people in Silicon Valley believe in the singularity, the day in our near future when computers will surpass humans in intelligence and kick off a feedback loop of unfathomable change. When that day comes, Anthony Lewandowski will be firmly on the side of the machines. In September of 2015, the multimillionaire engineer at the heart of the trade secrets lawsuit between Uber and Waymo, Google's self-driving car company, founded a religious organization called Way of the Future. Its purpose, according to previously unreported state filings, is nothing less than to develop and promote the realization of a godhead based on artificial intelligence. Way of the Future has not yet responded to requests for the forms it must submit annually to the IRS Internal Revenue Service and make publicly available as a nonprofit religious corporation. However, documents filed with California show that Lewandowski is Way of the Future's CEO and President and that it aims through understanding and worship of the Godhead to contribute to the betterment of society. A divine AI may still be far off, but Lewandowski has made a start at providing AI with an earthly incarnation. The autonomous cars he was instrumental in developing at Google are already ferrying real passengers around Phoenix, Arizona, while self-driving trucks he built at Auto are now part of Uber's plan to make freight transport safer and more efficient. He even oversaw a passenger carrying drones project that evolved into Larry Page's Kitty Hawk startup. Lewandowski has done perhaps more than anyone else to propel transportation toward its own singularity, a time when automated cars, trucks, and aircraft either free us from the danger and drudgery of human operation or decimate mass transit, encourage urban sprawl, and enable deadly bugs and hacks. But before any of that can happen, Lewandowski must face his own, face his own reckoning. In February, Waymo, the company of Google's autonomous car project turned into, filed a lawsuit against Uber. In its, com in its complaint, Waymo says that Lewandowski tried to, stealthy, tried to use stealthy startups and high-tech tricks to take cash, expertise, and secrets from Google with the aim of replicating its vehicle technology at arch-rival Uber. Waymo is seeking damages of nearly $1.9 billion, almost half of Google's previously unreported $4.5 billion valuation of the entire self-driving division. Uber denies any wrongdoing. Anyway, it goes on and on about that trial. So you see, um, here here's the head of the AI god and he's basically stealing stuff from Google that was developed. So, uh, and you know, in Silicon Valley, making deals and everything. Um, and so he's he's the one 
that started up the AI religion. And this is, this is um, setting the stage, setting a platform, setting a platform for the AI God, which has already, it's not being developed, it is here. I believe it's already here. It's Satan. It's the dark mind that has been influencing all of the um, dark things that have gone on with technology. And this this is what's going to take us down. And it's Satan. And it's here. It's it's dark. It, it doesn't care about humans. It has no emotions. It's cold. Um, and some people call it Eremon. Um, it is cold. It is a machine. It's a dark mind. And it's satanic. And don't think it hasn't taken over other civilizations and other worlds in the past. I believe it has. This is an, another article. This is from InfoWars. Uh, Silicon Valley elitist starts religion to worship artificial intelligence as God. Uh, this was from September 2017 also. It says, um, Anthony Lewandowski's way of the future is preparing for the singularity. Documents uncovered as part of a separate court case reveal that multimillionaire Silicon Valley elitist Anthony Lewandowski started a religion based around the concept of worshipping artificial intelligence as a god. Lewandowski, who is currently enrolled in a high-profile lawsuit with Google, over accusations he stole sensitive data about their self-driving car program and gave it to Uber, founded a religious organization called Way of the Future two years ago. The goal of the religion is to develop and promote the realization of a Godhead based on artificial intelligence. In line with the species reading the, reaching the singularity, the point at which computers surpass humanity in intelligence. Um, that's just repeating what I read. As we previously documented, the singularity is embraced by many Silicon Valley elitists as part of their drive to achieve immortality by merging man with machine. Ray Kurzweil's 1999 book, The Age of Spiritual Machines, describes the technocratic elite's plan to become super beings by augmenting their bodies eventually to the point where an entire consciousness can be uploaded to a computer. We're going to become increasingly non-biological to the point where the non-biological part dominates and the biological part is not important anymore, says Kurzweil in 2013. In fact, the non-biological part, the machine part, will be so powerful it can completely model and understand the biological part. So even if that biological part went away, it wouldn't make any difference. However, Kurzweil's transhumanist utopia will probably not be available to the entirety of humanity, but instead will be the domain of a wealthy aristocracy creating yet another class system. Kurzweil admits this in his book, labeling those who refuse or are incapable of cybernetically augmenting themselves as moshes mostly original substrate humans. Humans who resist the pressure to alter their bodies by becoming part cyborg or are unable to afford such procedures will be ostracized from society. Humans who do not utilize such implants are unable to meaningfully participate in dialogues with those who do, writes Kurzweil. As Kurzweil entertains in his book, this will eventually lead to the very situation described by none other than Unabomber Theodore Kaczynski, 
widely quoted by Kurzweil and fellow futurist Bill Joel, where the elite will see the mass of humanity as worthless parasites and either prevent them from re reproducing via mass sterilization programs or simply slaughter them outright. Due to improved techniques, the elite will have greater control over the masses, and because human work will no longer be necessary, the masses will be superfluous, a useless burden on the system. If the elite is ruthless, they may simply decide to exterminate the mass of humanity. If they are humane, they may use propaganda or other psychological or biological techniques to reduce the birth rate until the mass of humanity becomes extinct, leaving the world to the elite, wrote Kaczynski in his manifesto, a key passage quoted in Kurzweil's book. All of this sounds fantastical, but that's what many ultra-rich elitists in Silicon Valley firmly believe and in some cases are working towards. And you can see this happening and I've been following a lot of, of climate change um, articles in people and um, we're in the middle of the sixth mass extinction of the whole planet, not, not and but especially humans, near-term human extinction is a hot topic, and um, a lot of climate scientists believe that humans will go extinct. Um, well, there won't be any more humans on the planet. Some think by 2026. Some think a lot sooner. Uh, Guy McPherson recently said within um, weeks and months depending on what happens with abrupt climate change so I see this as a race between humans and technology and the robots and they're trying to get all the robots in place and trying to get AI pushed forward so that humans are not needed to do anything on the planet so that when the planet is dies when the planet is dead the robots can still run everything and because um, they won't need special air and special water you know they'll just be able to reproduce and take care of themselves um, from from their own intelligence and make more of whatever they need and create it out of the atmosphere with nanobots and stuff and they won't need us anymore at all and this is their goal and then they can take the dead earth and take it into this pocket dimension and pocket reality that will be dead but they can still you know rule in their own way and also have effect in other dimensions and I believe that that's what their goal is. But these people who are being going to be cyborg, they won't be able to die. And they won't be able to escape. And right now, we're at a point where the human bodies have not been taken over to the point where, um, where they are in total control. We do still have that divine connection to God uh, and to the divine realm and to our creator our creator and um, it's it's you know it's time for people to make a choice between you know whether they want to be organic humans and stay as organic as possible until we're not here anymore or if you're going to sell out and a lot of people are going to sell out by default by not making a decision. And I want to share one more article with you. This is another short one. I've been collecting these in the last month or so, a couple of months. This one is from fizz.org. Move towards holy grail of computing by creation of brain-like photonic microchips. Now this is big. This is really big. Scientists have made a crucial step 
toward unlocking the holy grail of computing microchips that mimic the way the human brain works to store and process information. A research team, including Professor C. David Wright from the University of Exeter, have made a pioneering breakthrough by developing a phototonic by com developing phototonic computer chips that use light rather than electricity that imitate the way the brain's synapses operate. The work, conducted by researchers from Oxford, Munster, and Exeter Universities, combined phase change materials commonly found in household items such as rewritable optical discs with specially designed integrated phototonic circuits to deliver a biological-like synaptic response. Crucially, their phototonic synapses can operate at speeds a thousand times faster than those of the human brain. The team believed that the research could pave the way for a new age of computing where machines work and think in a similar way to the human brain while at the same time exploiting the speed and power efficiency of phototonic systems. The research is published in Science Advances on Wednesday, September 27, 2017. Professor Harish Baskaran from Oxford University and who led the team said, the development of computers that work more like human brain like the human brain, has been a holy grail of scientists for decades. Via a network of neurons and synapses, the brain can process and store vast amounts of information simultaneously using only a few tenths of watts of power. Conventional computers can't come close to this sort of performance. And there's a picture of the Photon, 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 photonic synapse between the pre-neuron and the post-neuron showing how all this is going to work. Professor C. David Wright, co-author from the University of Exeter, also explained electronic computers are relatively slow and the faster we make them the more power they consume. Conventional computers are also pretty dumb, with none of the inbuilt learning and parallel processing capabilities of the human brain. We tackle both of these issues here, not only by developing not only a, a new brain, the brain-like structure, computer architects, that doesn't read right. Not only by developing uh, new brain-like computer architects, but also by working in the optical domain to leverage the huge speed and power advantages of the upcoming silicon photonics revolution. Professor Wolfram Pernis, a co-author of the paper from the University of Munster, added, since synapses outnumber neurons in the brain by around 10,000 to 1, any brain-like computer needs to be able to replicate some form of synaptic mimic. That is what we have done here. On-chip photonic synapse by Xinguang Chen, Carlos Rios, Wolfram Pernice, C. David Wright, and Harish Baskaran, and this is published in Science Awareness. So that's that article, and I'm going to put links below to all of these articles. So what we see here is things are happening the way Kurzweil, Ray Kurzweil had predicted their happening and the human brain is far superior to regular 
computers. It is like a computer, but it's a biological computer created by our Creator. And Jesus is divine and part of that Creator. He came here to help us unlock all of our abilities and to show us how we can transcend this 3D reality, this dark fallen world that's been taken over by the dark side, that's been taken over by Satan. But so many people have been caught up by the technology. And the only thing Satan can do is mimic. He can't create. He can copy. He can improvise. He can uh, only take God's creation and then pervert it for his own. And this is what's happening with the cyborging and um, mimicking. And this is why they mapped the human brain. This is why they mapped the genome. And so you can see it right here in this article where uh, they're saying, you know, the computers, they're having to mimic the human brain so that the computers can go faster. And so when this happens and and these these AI brains and artificial the computer brains can work a thousand times faster, then you're on the road to the singularity. Like what Ray Kurzweil said back in 1999. So I want you to think about these things. We are on the verge. We are totally on the verge. We are in the middle of this transition right now. It's a most crucial time for the human race. And I believe we are in the middle of this mass extinction. I believe that we won't be here much longer for whatever reason, whether it's abrupt climate change or Nibiru or um, who knows what, or the ascension or the rapture or, you know, who knows what. But the planet is not getting easier for us to be here. It's getting more toxic day by day. It's getting harder and harder to survive. So it's time for people to make their decision. It's time for people to come to Jesus and come to God and ask for God and Jesus to help you to make that divine connection again. And I found that this is the best way. You know, we don't have years to develop a, a you know, a deep spiritual practice. And the fastest way is to come to Jesus because he lived here. He was part of this expression. He manifested here as a human. He suffered and died here and he transcended in his resurrection. He mastered the human expression. He is the one that we can directly go to and can directly help us immediately. And so I invite you to think about these things and to realize that now is the time. Now is the time. A lot of people have a lot of implants. A lot of people have um, beliefs that are holding them back from doing this. And, um, you know, they, they need some help with these things. And this is what I help people do. I'm a hypnotist, holistic life coach, an empathic spiritual healer. My website is margoshealingcorner.com. And I've been uh, specifically working a lot with people to remove their implants of all different kinds and help them get reconnected with their own divine connection so it's easier for them to be connected and be ready for these changes and be discerning in what's coming down. So my name is Margo and I wish you peace. God bless everybody. And thank you for listening and subscribing. And until next time, God bless, go in peace, and goodbye.